We got the bottom hem, which is unfinished. What you're gonna wanna do to recreate this look is pick at these ends here and deconstruct the weft. I've already kind of started a little bit. And as we pick at those ends and pull this out a little bit more, we end up getting that deconstructed frayed look. So let's go. You want to be careful not to pull too much of the thread out because what you want to do is keep the fabric pretty much intact as you're deconstructing it. But what you want to do is loosen up that edge so that you can start to really get into that webbing effect. And you'll know when you got a good flow going because you'll see it start to actually loosen up. You may do well if your garment has a lot more stretch because you're gonna end up with a more flexible fabric. And as you can see, once you get it picked apart, it comes right on out. It's gonna look exceptionally well because the tie-dye effect in the garment, it already looks super duper cool. There, we're gonna move around just a little bit. Pick apart the edge. It's totally up to you. You can use a seam ripper on the edge. I prefer not to because I don't want it to cut it. Um, you can use the safety pin to like just get through those initial pieces, or you can just use your fingernails um, or fingertips. I found that the fingertips are the easiest and the most reliable um, to getting it kicked off and like with life like with anything the hardest part is the start I say be patient have fun with it it's relaxing to me especially when I go when I know where I'm going and since I've kind of gotten good at this I enjoy processing And I've noticed with this, the fabric will kind of tell you where it wants to go. And you just gotta kind of have to work with it to get it to act right. But I like that because it creates a unique texture. You'll have some, as you keep going with this, you'll have some, uh, some holes or uh, it'll produce like a webbing effect in certain areas where you've pulled it a little more in one area than another or the threads actually broke um, and that's cool too because what you can do then is start to really make graphic use of those uh, imperfections or happenings also kind of cut it too. All you really want to just get the frame started and once it starts it's over with. Yeah so I'm going stretching it and pull it. I also think this is really cool because you get a chance to see basically how this t-shirt was constructed. This is basically in, just interwoven. It's just this kind of netted matrix of colored thread that's knit, tightly knitted to produce the garments that we wear, the fabric.
some kind of therapeutic about it too. And the beauty in deconstruction. And when you get a, in a good flow, you can really like literally tear through it. I'll show you how to fix these types of holes if you don't like them. And just keep pulling at those threads. Sometimes switching up the direction in which you pull can alternate your pattern and it'll show up. What you want to try to do is keep your level consistent depending on what type of pattern you're going for with the deconstruction. I let the mood move me and dictate how I'm going. I do want this one to kind of have a chevron shape so I'm going to pay closer attention as we get more of this deconstructed and start detailing the areas that I'm looking to pull out. No pun intended. Now I am going to probably go to right here because I don't want to fray into the rest of the garment. I'm going to go to right, roughly right there, but I am going to allow it to fray up into the garment. I've done this a few times. So I've had my trial and error. I've done a tank top with it and um, I, I loved it. I ended up doing like kind of like a skyline shape where I had sections and made the fabric run. Coming from Chicago, I think that's dope. So, skylines and graffiti and stuff like that. That's my jam. And so, what I'm doing right now to kind of get it to fray quicker is I'm just pulling it against its grain in that same area, and then it starts to slack up. You can pull straight out. Or you can do that pull out method that I was just doing. And see you get you start to get that gradient come through from the tie-dye. And I personally love that. I think that's beautiful. Stress on it. Like you're gonna, gonna almost rip it. When you run into these blocks like that, that's because the thread is not loose enough. So, you can do it a few ways. Pull it apart in there, or force your way through it and make a hole. Totally up to you. You're deconstructing the fabric. It ain't gonna matter, see? What's gonna really be fun is once this is all done, we can just start to really tear through this. The whole ending hemline. Oh, it's gonna be so fun. I wanna work in this little section here because there's something going on and I wanna pull that out. And that happens too, and I think that's totally cool. When it does snap, totally cool. Those irregularities and breaks in the pattern, it, it keeps it interesting.
requires just a little bit of finesse because you don't want to just keep tearing at it and pulling at it and then it you have a lot of breaks you need to keep some semblance of the continuity find the vulnerabilities in the, the runs that will allow you to deconstruct without just ripping it tearing or the deconstruction noise kind of feel like it's ASMR <laughs> let's see if we can get a good audio of it
There we go. Finally. Whole hand is finally deconstructed. Man, we can just do this to the desired length or in the desired pattern. That's pretty much it. Now that we've gotten the whole thing deconstructed, we can really start to move along in detail there are certain areas. Now, you've seen how we've deconstructed, and I'm going to show you how to, now since we've gotten a good headway, how to let gravity help you out with deconstructing a little bit faster. I'll also show you how to, if you want to close up some of the holes, if you don't like that these are, have happened, I kind of like them. I like the spider webbing effect, but I can show you a really, really cool way to seal that up. So it's pretty long and starting to look really cool. So what you're going to do is allow the weight of the garment to help you with the deconstruction. So I kind of leaned it over the edge of the chair. And what I'm going to do is find my areas that I need to go further because as you can see, it's not even. And again, I think I want to even that up just a little bit, or at least kind of have an asymmetrical. Way. Suggest that as you go along. Spell uniform. I think it's right where I want it. So now, some of these larger holes, I'm going to close up a little bit. This one specifically. That was just too much tension that I was using, moving too quick. Um, I'll leave smaller, I'm gonna leave smaller ones like that. 
this bad boy. We're gonna fix that. So, to kind of close up the larger holes, pull it in from all four points. Turn it over. I spin it. creates that web. I can do it again underneath. Turn it over. Grabbing that edge. Turn it. Spin it. Put that edge off. like a flower and you can continue to play with that same thing turn it over or take it from the bottom webbing if that's your big if that's your jam I can leave that one that one don't need to be tied up Can't let the fabric tell me what it want to do. Because sometimes it won't cooperate. And I'll take that as a sign it don't want to do that. And that's okay. Seen you ripping to push that little bit of that little knot to the thread. That works too.
I'm gonna tighten this one up. I want this one to look better. Looks like we're pretty much done. 